fun. So, as you guys know, I mean, it is May, and just around the corner, we'll all be running to the beach and the pool if we haven't done so already. But May also signifies Skin Cancer Awareness Month, something we should all, as residents of Florida, be aware of. And I couldn't think of anybody more qualified or better to talk about how to protect that skin and sunblocks and sunscreens and all that good stuff is our good friend, the world-renowned cosmetic dermatologist, Dr. Leslie Bauman joins us in studio. Doctor, thank you for coming in. Thanks for having me. We're excited. Listen, when you're a resident of Florida, you've been here, we know that, okay, snowbirds are gone. <laughs> we get the beaches back, we get our pools back, and we're revved up, we're ready to go outside, 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 you know, whether it be golfing or and all of the outdoor activities. And we don't spend an awful lot of time worrying about how to protect ourselves. And that is why May and right now is more important than any time to get a really good understanding of the 9 million products that, are, that say they do one thing. Um, how would you describe um, sunscreen, the market right now? It's so oversaturated. How do people navigate through what's what? Well, it's difficult because there's so many different sunscreens. And what's interesting is the U.S. is behind other countries. Our, our technology is not as good. Mm -hmm. There was so much infighting about FDA regulations and what they're going to approve that finally the FDA just said, look, we're not approving anything new. We're just going to keep what we have. Okay. So the companies are trying to just, with different marketing things, get you to buy their product. But it's really the same stuff that's been out there. Mm, it, it really is. And, and that brings me perfectly to my next question because I, I know my girlfriend had asked me to ask you this. Mm -hmm. Everyone's got that beach and pool bag, all right? And okay. in that beach and pool bag, it hasn't been touched since the last time we were at the beach or the pool, and it could be a year. It could be sometimes even longer, and they just assume. Is, are there expiration dates on these, on these screens that we have? Well, they usually will say two years on there, but really, once you open them, you should throw them out in about six months. Oh, wow. But if you have it in your beach or pool bag or your car, or it's hot, then it's going to go bad sooner. Mm. So, really, you should go through a whole tube when you're at the beach, and then if you if there's any left, just throw it out after really a month if you've opened it. Okay. Really? So, even after, so use it, get do it, go out and get another one. Exactly. And I always tell people, buy a cheap sunscreen so you'll use it. If you have an expensive one, you're going to only put a little bit on, and then it's not going to work. Yes. And it's funny, we've gotten a whole bunch of uh, questions that have been sent in that I want to ask, because there is, and you know this better than anything, Dr. Leslie Bauman joining us, there's a lot of confusion. And the media and and the ad the ad companies, they do a wonderful job of misdirection and, and kind to, to try. And it's so hard to navigate for the consumer because they just okay, this is a popular brand, but that may not exactly be the best for your particular skin. Right. Well, the problem is in May, a couple of companies like Consumer Reports mm. and the EWG usually come out with these scary reports right before Memorial Day that tell you sunscreens are going to kill you, they're going to give you cancer, <laughs> they're horrible. Mm -hmm. So I get all these calls in my office saying, oh my gosh, what do I do? I can't wear sunscreen. And then there's this time period right here in May when mm. you need to be wearing sunscreen that everyone's afraid of it. So I'm glad you have me on because I want to kind of dispel some of those myths so that when those reports come out in right. a couple of days, everybody's ready. Okay. In cool. fact, I read a column for the Miami. Miami Herald, in the last two columns that I wrote, I talk about the sunscreen testing and regulation so people can educate themselves if they want to see what the FDA requires versus what Consumer Reports and EWG are going to tell us they did in their studies. Are you going to tell me that those don't often align with each other? Is Not that, no, exactly. come on. <laughs> <laughs> Is that what you're going to tell me? What right. a shock. Well, you never know what's going to be this year, but last year Consumer Reports um, put sunscreen on people mm -hmm. and then immersed them in the water for about, I think it was 30 minutes, and then did the sunscreen testing and said these sunscreens didn't hold up. Yes. But they didn't use water resistant sunscreen, so it's kind of cheating. Uh, it's not fair. If you're going to put someone in the water for 30 minutes, you need to use water resistant sunscreens. Okay. Those are the ones that are tested to be immersed for 30 minutes. So they have testing for 30 minutes and 60 minute immersion. So, and for no immersion at all. Right. So, for example, if you're going to be just daily use, you don't need a waterproof sunscreen. If okay. You're, if you're not going to be sweating, you're not going to be in the water. Because the waterproof ones are kind of sticky and gooey. Mm -hmm. they have, they're more oily because that's how they, they stay water resistant. Yes. So, yeah, we see that in the pools all the time. You jump in, and then all of a sudden, it's like it, it looks like there, there's what happened. Was there a tanker? Like what happened here? We don't know what's going on. There's oil everywhere. Exactly. 
Exactly. And chemical sunscreens are all soluble in oil, which mm -hmm. means they're made with oil. So oily people don't like chemical sunscreens, and it leaves that, that kind of scum on the water. Right. And it's, ca it's causing problems with the coral and the fish, and Hawaii just banned some chemical yeah. sunscreens this week, yeah. actually. You think that's going to be more, uh, will we see that? Hawaii, obviously, a very big tourism. Uh, they, they count on the tourism industry. They know people are coming in. Florida is the same way. You see more states uh, taking that on as well? Probably, because it's not just about wearing sunscreen in the water. It's about when you rinse off in the shower, some of that sunscreen gets into the, the water system mm -hmm. as well. Uh, but there are a lot of very safe sunscreens out there, so you should people shouldn't avoid all sunscreens. They they really should stick with physical sunscreens, which is zinc oxide, like okay. the old lifeguard whitening. The classics, yeah, yes. that's the way to go. It's still the best. I love that, Dr. Leslie Bauman uh, joining us, and uh, we we've got a whole bunch of questions. I want to get to as many as we can here because it is important. May is skin cancer awareness month it is that one month where we start gearing up and going outside and spending time in the sun especially the florida sun so let me get to uh one of the first questions and i think you just kind of touched on it was uh sweating and sweat for you put it on but you're out sweating you don't know do i put it back on how long am i protected those kinds of things Right, so you need different sunscreens for different activities. So, for example, if you're going to run or play tennis and you know you're going to sweat, you don't want a sunscreen that's going to run into your eyes. So you mm. need a water-resistant one. As long as it says water-resistant on there, it should be sweat-proof. Okay. But you don't want an ingredient called avobenzone. Okay. A-V-O-B-E-N-Z-O-N-E, -E, avobenzone, because that burns your eyes. So if it does get in your eyes at all, uh, it, it, will, it burns. So a lot of people will tell me I hate sunscreens because they burn my eyes, but it's really just that one ingredient that's the problem. How common is that? It's very it's common. It's very common. Yeah, okay. so it's in a lot of the Neutrogena brands and the Vino brands and all the ones that say broad spectrum, so it's, it's very popular. It's a great sunscreen, that's why it's so popular. Right. So if you're not going to be putting it on your face, don't avoid avobenzone. On mm. your body, it's great. It just happens to burn your eyes. And it's funny, too, uh, we got a whole bunch of uh, questions that were sent in regarding uh, the level of SPF on the bottles and on the on the products because people, people all had the same thing to say. I, I don't want to burn, but I, I want to get... Tan. I want to get some color when I go too. So what? What do they look at? Well, um, for every day you need an SPF of 15. Um, but the reason there's a lot of controversy about how high of an SPF you need is it all depends on how much you put on, and people don't put enough on. Mm. So when people are telling you to use 100 SPF or higher, that's because people don't put enough on. If you put enough on, then you don't have to use as high. So. A shot glass, if you measure out a shot glass of sunscreen, that's how much you should put on your body. Wow. And um, it also depends on how long you're going to be out there. So I think you should do at least an SPF of 50, a okay. whole shot glass on, and you should look pretty white. And you should be, yeah, so yeah. get it get it going on there. Yeah. Another one we've got, as people talked about, is there different sunscreen for different body parts? Am I putting different stuff on my nose, my face, my arms? How does that work? Yeah, I, I'm a golfer myself, so I wear a lip sunscreen product. You eat your li what you put on your lips, so you want something yes. different for your lips because right. you know you're going to ingest it. So I like to use um, a Kula tinted, um, it almost looks like you have lipstick on, but it's a sunscreen. And then on my face, I like to use um, something tinted okay. that's thicker. And then on my body, I like to use a spray. Because uh, when you play golf, you don't want to get your hands all gross every right. hour, so a spray is nice. The problem with sprays is people don't always completely cover their skin, so you have to really make sure you get all the spots. Okay, well. But sprays are good to get in your own back if you don't have And your back if you're yeah. by yourself, and we've all been there um, at that point where it's like, well, I don't want to ask that guy laying next to me, so why don't we just go ahead, give me a spray can, we're good to go there. Right. Uh, another question that we uh, that came in, and we saw a few of these too, has to do with um, young children and people who are going to go to the beach and bring babies they're very unsure uh, just because it says children on it is that safe how do they know what's safe and what's not safe for the children right so with children their body surface area of how much skin they have um, as compared to how much body mass they have is very different they have more skin per body than, okay. than adults have so that means they're going to absorb more of the ingredients so it's a lot more important to avoid chemicals in children at least especially under two and in babies so you only want what are called physical sunscreens in babies, which is zinc oxide or titanium dioxide. Okay. So if you don't mind for a second, I want to explain the difference. Between, Please do. Go. So there's really two categories of sunscreen. There's chemical sunscreens and there's physical sunscreens. And it has to do with how it protects you from the sun. 
So chemical sunscreens absorb the sun into themselves and, and have a chemical reaction. And those are the ones that are getting banned in Hawaii. Yes. That people say cause skin cancer and cause all kinds of problems. But they're really great at absorbing the sun and protecting your skin from the sun. Okay. Um, but, but they're kind of an issue. Physical sunscreens are made of little pieces of metal, actually, wow. that um, reflect the sun away from you. So metal like zinc or yes. titanium. So imagine you're putting aluminum foil over your skin, but in tiny little particles. And those particles are white, and that's why those look very white. Right. So... Um, we like, we being dermatologists, like physical sunscreens better because they don't cause all the problems to your skin that chemicals cause and they don't cause all the same problems in the environment. Right. People don't like them so much because they can be thick and white, they don't spread really well. So I always joke, I'm lucky I'm a dermatologist because I can walk around with thick white sunscreen on and, and no one no thinks problem. I'm weird. They're like, oh, yes. she's a dermatologist. No <laughs> problem. I love that. Dr. Leslie Bauman uh, joining us. And this came in too, and I thought this was funny. Uh, People who have olive complexion, they say. They're, they're naturally um, darker tones. And we've seen these folks at the beach, at the pool. They don't have sunscreen. They put on baby oil or all of these ridiculous, like, and it doesn't seem to bother because they never burn. They never do anything along those lines. Uh, are those folks immune from skin cancer? I mean, should they be protecting themselves? <laughs> Absolutely. So darker skin types, they have more trouble finding a sunscreen that doesn't look white or kind of violety on them. So a lot of times they don't, they're not as good about sunscreen. And skin cancers in darker skin types are more deadly. Oh. So African Americans who get a melanoma have a much higher death rate than people who are lighter. And part of the reason is that it's caught later because people don't think to go to their doctor and worry about right. it. And they're less likely to get skin checks, so they're usually farther along when they get caught. But if you have really dark skin, you um, the sun is going to burn you, but you don't see the red, so you don't know to come in out of the sun. Okay. And it, um, people with darker skin types, the sun damage they get instead of wrinkles is they get sagging. So they wow. start to get like the lines around their nose and the, mm. the jowls and everything. Wow. So it's um, even if it, it's not always just about skin cancer, it's also about aging and Age. aging back sure. too. Exactly yeah. correct. And and how about I know we got a question about rosacea and is there a special sunscreen? for rosacea, other types of, um, of skin issues? That is a great question because rosacea patients feel a lot of stinging. They're very, their skin's very sensitive to mm -hmm. different ingredients. So avobenzone, the ingredient that causes your eyes to sting, and some other chemical sunscreens really bother patient, people with rosacea. So people with rosacea should use only zinc oxide sunscreen. Okay. Of the two physicals, the zinc oxide and the titanium dioxide, I'm really a zinc oxide fan. Because zinc is good for your skin. Okay. It's anti-inflammatory. Um, that's really the one to go with. That's the one you yeah. like there. Yeah. Because you can't mention that like three or five, so I'm just going to say. You yeah, the we'll zinc say and the titanium. And it's in every brand. You can go to CVS and get something, or you can go to right. Marcus and get something, but they're, they all have zinc oxide, a, a lot of the good ones. Dr. Leslie Bauman joining us. And I want to, um, before we get to some of the brands, you had mentioned a few, and we'll, we'll try to condense that for folks that are looking for recommendations. How about, uh, and this, um, I'm, what about people who are on medications? And people who are taking certain drugs for what you know for for medical purposes, they're always told don't go out in the sun or do that. Is there a, a is how do you decipher who should go and who shouldn't go? Well, different drugs make you photosensitive, and you have to be more careful in the sun. So doxycycline, people are taking that for their acne. A lot of teenagers okay. that'll make you sun sensitive. Accutane makes you sun sensitive. Okay. And, you know, I have a funny story for you. There are some, um, some fruits that make you sun sensitive. What? So, yeah, really? people don't really know. So limes are one of them. So I had a patient who was 15 who came in, and she had this brown rash right at the cross of her hand where your thumb and your finger is. And okay. she came in, her parents brought her in, what is this rash? And um, I took one look and I smiled at her because I knew immediately she was doing tequila shots by the pool. Wow, <laughs> that's crazy. Busted. Wow. <laughs> because you know how people will put the lime on that little yes. area and then suck it and then do the tequila shot? Well, the lime makes you sensitive to the sun, so you burn right there in a very wow. characteristic pattern. So would not have known that, which changes my whole corona <laughs> drinking at the beach uh, from here on out. It really does. Wow, that's, that's actually some very useful information for people. And finally, Dr. So let's talk about recommendations. I know you love the the physical, mm -hmm. um, the physical screens. Uh, are there? There's so many different brands. There's so much. You know, do, do they go with the CVS? You know, no name brand. Is it better to go with a name brand? What are your recommendations? 
Um, well, there's lots of different places you can get sunscreen. We sell sunscreen at SkinTypeSolutions.com if people want to get doctor dispensed sunscreen. Mm. But my favorite brands are Abaji Sun Shield. Elta MD has a lot of really good ones. A lot of doctors sell that. Okay. The Neutrogena makes a new zinc one that's physical only that's very good. Okay. Um, SkinCeuticals has a great sports sunscreen that doesn't burn your eyes and it doesn't whenever you sweat. It's made for running okay. and things like that. It's called SkinCeuticals Sport. Um, let me think what else do I like. I love the Kula Lips products. Okay. The Bare, bare Minerals people make an eyeshadow sunscreen. Wow. So for women, you know, you don't want to get saggy eyelids. Right. So it looks like eyeshadow, but it's a sunscreen. So those are really all my favorites. And and let's face it, May, Skin Cancer Awareness Month. We know we live in Florida. Don't, don't get lulled into that. I live here. I've been here. I'm used to the sun. Uh, no, because the last thing that you want to do is have to go and, and test for skin cancer and realize, wow, mm -hmm. I should have after the fact. So it's always, it's so important for you to be able to understand what kind of skin type you have, what's best at protecting you, and really getting into a routine, mm -hmm. right? And, right. And you should get a body check every year, okay. especially if you have red hair. If you have red hair, um, the red hair gene, the freckle gene, and the melanoma, melanoma gene are all attached. So that means that redheads are, are a much higher level for getting melanoma. Great. And if you've had someone in your family, the first degree relative, meaning a parent or a sibling, have a skin cancer or a melanoma especially, you need to get checked every six months. So hereditary or just you're more susceptible than others if somebody else in the family... Hereditary. It's, really? Wow. Okay. Yeah. Wow, I didn't know that either. See? And melanoma is deadly, and it is absolutely curable if you catch it early. Everything. So yeah. it's about staying on to go get tested. Exactly. Yeah. I joke that Botox saved four of my patients' lives because four <laughs> patients came in to get Botox, and I found a melanoma on them. I love that. <laughs> Dr. Leslie Bauman, uh, it is a pleasure to have you come in. I can't thank you enough for taking the time and trying to keep us all safe. The Bauman Cosmetic and Research Institute, all this information plus so much more you can get at derm.net. It is May. It is Skin Cancer Awareness Month. Take care of your skin. It'll take care of you. And like you said, doctor, especially in the long run, because it ain't just about burning, it's about aging. So the, soon, you know, the more you take care of it now, the better off it'll be down the road. Right. Start when you're young, you know. If you're a parent, put it on your kids because while you can get them to do what you want them to do. Yes. And then if you're old, if you're a teenager, put, use it. Don't You know, if you're 14, 15, start now. And when you're in my age group, you're going to look so much better. So it's important to use. I love that. All right. And if you would like a complimentary consultation at Bauman Cosmetic and Research Institute, Text us now, 31, 31, 31. Start that text with the word revolution. You can go meet the doctor yourself in person. She's wonderful. I'm telling you that right now. <laughs> and bring your questions and go check it out. It's like you said, knowledge is power. So the more you know, the better off you can prepare yourself. Dr. Leslie Bauman, Bauman Cosmetic and Research Institute. Go get checked. Get your zinc, get your tightness. <laughs>